After we have the, the blade ground and your name stamped in it, um, I would go to uh, grinding wise about 120 grit. Um, that's fine enough. We'll finish grinding and polishing the blade after it's heat treated. At this point we're going to put the clay on the blade. And the reason I do that is so I have a soft back and a hard edge. And that enables the blade to flex a lot more than if you didn't put the clay on um, so it doesn't break. So just take an old plastic spoon and uh, what you want to do is put about oh an eighth of an inch about halfway down the blade and on the spine of the blade. And what this does is um, as the steel heats up, the whole blade comes up to temperature and then when you cool it, this cools slower than the edge and the back converts to back to perlite. And I find it works just as well when the clay is wet heat treating the blade as waiting an hour or two and letting it harden. I don't find there's a big difference. It actually stays on better wet I think. Now you can do um, fancy temper lines. O1 pretty much gives you a straight line because it's so high in carbon. Um, if you were to use 1050, 1084, you can get some really cool temper lines. In 1050 you can get Choji, uh, 1084 you can get Gnome, and it's a lot of fun playing with temper lines. That's why I do this too. So there you go. Just thick enough so it'll stop the hardening. Now we're going to heat treat the blade. What we've done is cover the blade with some clay. We have our forge set up, our little miniature forge, and then we're going to do our bath for a quench. And it's just a, a pot and we're going to pour some olive oil in it. I use olive oil because it's a fast quench. It's faster than old motor oil and it doesn't stink as much or flare up as much as motor oil. Um, if I was heat treating a bigger blade, I would warm up the oil to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. But because this is such a small blade, it'll cool fast enough in this olive oil that we don't have to do that. You need enough oil so that it'll, it'll uh, disperse the heat fast enough. So you can't just use a little cup of oil. It has to be, you want a good 3-4 inches all around the blade. So about 4 liters of olive oil is good. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the blade in the forge and bring it up to critical temperature. And critical temperature is when the steel becomes non-magnetic. So what we're going to do is set up a magnet right here in our vise and we're going to take the blade out as it gets hot and test it against the magnet. And as soon as the blade becomes non-magnetic we're going to put it back in and warm it up a little bit more then take it out and quench it in the oil. When heat treating your knife, make sure you have a long pair of tongs. Um, four inch pliers are not long enough. This actually throws out a lot of heat. So make sure you have gloves on. Make sure you have long tongs. Um, you can get them at any flea market for a couple bucks. And um, make sure you have a lid handy to put on your oil in case it flares up. 
and also make sure you have a fire extinguisher handy. Now we're going to let our propane forge. I have two different types of uh, propane burners here. The automatic burns matic works the best. You just pull on the trigger. Uh, the other one you have to use a striker and you just turn the knob on slowly. testing it against the magnet and you can see it sticks. When the blade does not stick against the magnet it's reached critical temperature. That's around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the temperature that we want. When it becomes non-magnetic that's when we want to place it into the olive oil to harden it. So now we're going to take the blade and place it in the forge. Bring it back up to temperature again, and then quench it in the olive oil. 